In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Several years ago, I received a wonderful little book for Christmas. It was a collection of poems written by Denise Levertov. And as I flipped through its pages, I came across a poem entitled Annunciation. And in that poem, the poet reflects on the Gospel account of the Archangel Gabriel's visit to the Blessed Virgin Mary. It is an insightful poem filled with beauty and understanding. At one point in the poem, Denise Levertov says this. She says that whenever the Annunciation is described, and I quote, we are told of meek obedience, but no one mentions courage. No one mentions courage. I am still haunted by that line several years since I first read it. And I think about that poetic insight again today on this Feast of the Annunciation. Very few celebrations interrupt the flow of our liturgies in Lent. But the Annunciation is such an important moment in the life of our faith that we focus on its profound meaning with special joy today. Denise Levertov said that when preachers preach about the Annunciation, we usually focus on obedience. Mary's obedience to God's plan as communicated by the Archangel Gabriel. But the poet says, no one mentions courage. And I think that the poet is right. Far too often when Christians think about Mary, we focus on the fact that she was meek, humble, obedient to the Lord. And all of those things are true and good. Gabriel announces God's desire for Mary's life, and in the end, she says yes, with the obedience that can inspire us to say yes to God's plan as well. Obedience is one part of the Annunciation Gospel. But no one mentions courage. And it's not just the poets who understand this. Visual artists also show us the courage that is required to say yes to God. Over a decade ago, I was at the Louvre Museum in Paris. There are, in one section, many paintings of the Annunciation scene. And in every other museum of the world, you can find similar paintings of the Archangel Gabriel and Mary. In many of those paintings, both in Paris and elsewhere, Mary is portrayed as a placid, calm, attentive woman who seems to be unfazed by the arrival of her heavenly visitor. Perhaps that's why, at the Louvre in Paris, one painting caught my attention. It was by an Italian Renaissance painter named Carlo Bracesco. And in his painting of the Annunciation, Mary is clothed like a 15th century Italian woman, sitting on what looks like a 15th century Italian porch. Gabriel is flying in from the right side of the painting. And so far, this looks like many, many other paintings of this scene. But then I noticed a detail. As Gabriel comes swooping in with God's message, the Blessed Virgin Mary is holding on to the porch pole for dear life. Carlo Bracesco, the artist, is showing us what a hard thing God is asking Mary to do. God's invitation caught her off guard, and she grabbed on to the pole to steady herself as she listened to the angel's message. It took courage loving courage, generous courage, for Mary to say yes to the message of the angel. It took great courage for this teenager to say yes to God's plan, that her womb should become the place of the Incarnation. Wasn't it a supreme act of courageous love for Mary to give her life over to God and to bear Jesus in her body? Saying yes to God changed her life. Saying yes to God took courage. 
Saying yes meant that she would face struggles. Saying yes implies the cross, but the cross brings resurrection. Our courage brings blessings from the Lord. If that's true for Mary, I suspect that it's true for us. It takes courage for us to say yes to God. It takes courage for us to say to the Lord, what do you want me to do today and every day? It takes courage to listen, really listen to God when God speaks. It takes courage for us to hand our lives over to the Lord as Mary did. It takes courage for us to say to Christ, take my body, take my flesh, take flesh in me, and use my life for your purpose. It takes courage to say yes to our vocation, to say yes when the Lord asks us to care for the poor, to say yes when God asks us to give our time to support a lonely or pregnant teenager who's considering an abortion. It takes courage for us to give to charity when our own bills haven't quite been paid yet. It takes courage for us to really give up that sin, to fight that addiction, to change that behavior, or to forgive when everything else is telling you to get even. It takes courage to move when the Lord directs you to go. In a televised interview several years ago, Sister Helen Prejean quoted a fourth century church theologian who said the following, Annunciations are common. Incarnations are rare. I think this means that God is constantly speaking to us. God is constantly calling out to us, sending us his messengers, telling us that he has a plan for our lives. Annunciations are common because God, each day, asks us to listen and to say yes to his will. But often, we don't have the courage the courage to let God's word take flesh in us, to become incarnate in us. God is inviting constantly. Humans are enfleshing God's word infrequently. That's why today we honor Mary. And we pray that her example will strengthen us so that we might listen to God when he speaks, and have the courage to say yes to all that he asks. May the Lord be praised now and forever. Amen.